Yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I ended up in this situation. Hold up, wait a minute. Jesus Christ, that's Kelly Slater. Okay, okay, this is actually me. I never really thought about surfing when I was growing up, mostly because in my country we don't have access to sea or ocean. Also, it always looked like a sport for ripped, cool looking people. And here I am, a nerdy looking, skinny dude who's the opposite of cool. So how did I end up spending every waking moment thinking about waves in my 30s? Let's rewind a little bit. Yeah, it's rewind time. When I was a kid, I promised to myself I would try to do as many things and learn as many skills as possible. It resulted in me always finding new hobbies, getting into them and then abandoning them for the next thing. When I was 17 or maybe 18, I got myself into skateboarding, which I always found interesting. I was watching videos of people like Rodney Mullen, doing crazy stuff with the board and thinking how cool that was. So of course I got myself a board and started practicing with my best friend. I barely learned ollie and as with every other thing in my life, I slowly forgot about it and let it collect dust. And then a few years back, another friend told me that they want to learn how to surf. The predecessor of skateboarding suddenly caught my attention and the idea was planted. Resilient, highly contagious. Still no ocean and no waves in sight, sure. But it was something that I've never tried, a new challenge. It hit somewhere at the back of my mind, waiting to be awakened. And then I started dating a girl who happened to be very passionate about surf and surfing culture. And the spark was back. Stop. No. Suddenly the plan is very simple. Let's go somewhere where we can learn how to surf. So that's what we did. We made our way to Puerto Escondido in Mexico with the world famous Zicatela Beach. We rented an apartment for a month with the goal to surf as much as possible and the journey has begun. 6 a.m. It's time to get surfing, I guess. We found an instructor and off we went. Do you know that feeling when you do something for the first time and there's this hope that maybe, just maybe, you'll be amazing at this thing? Maybe this is what you were always supposed to do and you're just a natural talent. That's the sort of pressure I put on myself with everything. I put on the leash, took the surfboard and paddled out with the instructor. We waited for the right moment and with his guidance I tried to catch some waves. And I did. I managed to stand up on several small waves. The first one was amazing. Jesus. I will never forget that. I did forget that. But I remember that I couldn't wait to get back in the water and learn more. The next two sessions were good too, but the beginner's luck wore off and the reality of learning a new skill hit me like a brick. I am dead. Today was hard. My whole body was in pain, my shoulders hurt from paddling, my ribs started getting irritated. Nobody tells you that your ribs hurt from surfing. <laughs> who knew? Turning is so much harder than it looks. And you are in the water with a bunch of people who are way better than you, trying to catch the same waves. So you're just standing there, letting the wave take you somewhere with no control over what's happening. And sometimes there's a lot of people around you. But after a few lessons, I finally managed to get a shot of myself surfing. It was time to try a different place. And what a difference that was. In a bad way, I mean. It was horrible. The first time on a different beach with different waves. I stood up once in two hours of surfing. I managed to stand up once for like four seconds. This was also the first time I understood what a wipeout is. When you fall in a strong wave and it just takes you and keeps you underwater without mercy, rolling you around before it spits you out. You don't know where it's up, where it's down, your legs and arms are flailing everywhere. And the worst part was that once I got above surface to catch a breath, there was another wave crashing on me. And another, and another. And it was so much paddling back, my shoulders were burning. I just can't seem to catch the waves at all. It's always about timing. Every time we went on that other beach, I was thinking, hey, I can do it, I know I can. And then the ocean just put me in my place immediately. I got a little bit frustrated at this point because I've been out surfing maybe like dozen times and it just felt like I'm getting worse and worse. One month just went by and we were supposed to leave Puerto Escondido. So we took a last lesson in Zicatela and finally the practice paid off. Today was amazing, dude. I'm so happy with today. It's like life is telling me don't give up. It can be fun. Looking back, I feel like this was more of life's way of giving me that one win to keep me in the game before it just threw a boulder of failures at me that were about to come. Having an experienced person with you in the water, someone who's been surfing basically their whole life, makes this journey 
infinitely easier than trying it on your own. And now when it was time for me to start surfing on my own, I quickly realized that I don't know anything. Even after asking million questions about surfing, the etiquette, the waves, the behavior, positions, whatever, it didn't matter, it was all gone. I paddled out in the same waters as I've been surfing until now in Zicatella Beach, but everything was off. I couldn't find a good spot to wait for the waves. I tried catching them, but my position was always wrong, and even when a wave actually came, I messed up either timing to stand up or the position on a board that was different from the one I've been using before. The best spot for the waves was of course taken by the locals and the instructors, but I didn't want to intrude or be in their way, because I'm not that experienced, and I've heard that they can get a little bit angry. Or at least I've heard stories of surfers fighting over waves, and I mean literal fighting. Once again, the frustration came back. I knew I can surf, but it felt like I was back at the beginning. Just once I did, but the wave didn't have enough power. In the complete beginning, I would be happy that I stood up, but now it felt more like a defeat. I was disappointed that my last memory of Zicatela will be this horrible performance. But the next destination was Peru, with promise of more surfing and less crowds. Our goal was to get to a place where apparently there is the longest left break in the world, suitable for beginners as well. A place where waves just keep coming and if you manage to catch them, you're not surfing for just seconds, but for minutes. With excitement, we traveled to a small empty village by the coast of Peru with few tiny shops and bunch of stray dogs. I don't think we came in the right time. <laughs> There's no waves. Uh, first of all, they're very small and second of all, they're not long at all. This was supposed to be my triumph over surfing. I don't think it's going to happen. We found out the surf spot was actually a little walk behind the village. So we went up a hill to have a better view of the surroundings. We found the waves! We rented a board and went to try it out. One big difference in Peru was that you need a wetsuit, because the ocean is so cold. Maybe too cold for my liking, but I really wanted to try it. And this is so weird. <laughs> I went into the water with the... Wetsuit so immediately got wet inside. I thought I'm gonna be dry, that's why you wear a wetsuit. In the beginning, the same feelings I had in Zicatela came back. I was worried about other surfers, my position was wrong, I was trying to catch the wrong waves, and then I remembered my last class with our instructor. He told me, don't put so much pressure on yourself. You should enjoy it more, just being out in the water. And that's when I decided I had to stop taking it so seriously and listen to what he told me. They were maybe not the legendary waves we were chasing, they were not big or strong, I didn't get barreled, but I was alone, without anyone telling me when to stand up or which wave to take, and I loved it. But it wasn't until end of our trip when all the little pieces started to fall into place. We were in Lima, capital of Peru, with a big surfing scene. Right in the city you'll find several beaches with surfers all day long. By this point I surfed in five different locations. The wind drop out. <laughs> on at least eight different boards. I watched other surfers either around me in the water or from the beach. I absorbed all the information and my arms got stronger so I could pedal more and longer. I had more confidence and could control my body on the board better. It was time for one last surf before going back home. <laughs>
So did I learn a new thing? I think so. My childhood me would be proud that I never listened to people laughing at me for never finishing things, trying to discourage me. I didn't become amazing at surfing, but who cares? I had fun and found a new love that I never knew I'll have. It was time for me to return and leave surfing behind. Or was it?